Hey, what's going on guys? So the Master Grade Tall Geese got a brand new set of wings. Well, sort of new anyway. In this premium Bendai release of the Glory of Losers version of the Tall Geese, the Tall Geese Flugel, it's a very beautiful and handsome looking kit, I must say. Let's go ahead and take a look at it in today's review. This video also made in partnership with Sakurako and Tokyo Treat. Alright guys, so starting off taking a look at the box art here. With this being a P-Bandai kit, of course, it's just in monotone color with it just being kind of a grayscale image of the model kit there. In a cool pose, I will say, it definitely does look very nice. But with there not being too much to see here on the front of the box, we can go ahead, go around onto the sides where it's just basically kind of the same thing. Talgis Flugel EW there, and on the sides of the box we just basically got the name there, so there's not really too much to see. So let's go ahead and open it up. Right off the bat, we've got some water slide decals. Very nice to see those included anytime. With this being an EW kit, that means these are basically going to be Katoki style decals there, as you can see. There's our wing parts, which I'm anxious to get a look at the runner markings for those. But we'll get into all the runners here in just a second. First, just want to take a look here at the manual, which now we have the artwork from the front of the box in full color. That said, it's obviously mostly a white mobile suit, so there's not too much to see there. And it may look like the image is really blown out here, but that's just how it looks on the book. But you do have little bits of yellow in there, obviously the red for the crest on the head, which looks really nice. Here on the back side of the manual, we've got the decal guide, and yeah, it's got a lot of decals on there, so it's going to take you a little while. You also have the painting guide down there at the bottom as well in Japanese and in English there for your reference. Inside here we've got our parts list and as you can see there's going to be some leftover parts of some wing parts. So those are probably wings from the wing Gundam Zero Verka. So you'll have some leftover bits of those. You'll have, probably have some leftover tall geese parts in here that you're not going to use as well. Maybe like backpack parts and stuff like that I would guess. The rest of this is just going to go through all the construction and weapons, how to expand the wings and everything and mounted on action base, and that's it for the manual. So let's go ahead and check out the runners. All right, so first off, here is our small sheet of foil stickers. As you can see, there's a few little dots and a little yellow color correcting stickers on there, a couple little bits. And our very nice water slide decals, mostly in red and white. You've got that standard tall geese yellow one on there, but a lot of really great decals on here. Again, pretty much a Verka style water slide, water slide decal sheet. You got your one little spring in there, PC207 for our polycaps in gray and SB4 for your beam saber effect parts. Now going through the runners, I'll first start off by going through all of the runners from the Tall Geese EW, then the Wing Zero Verka, and then we'll do the brand new runners at the end. So starting off, these first few are all going to be from the Tall Geese EW. Here's the A runner with red, yellow, and clear. Runners B1 and B2 are going to be some white armor pieces. Runners C1 and C2 are going to be some frame parts here in gray. Runner D is going to be some parts here in dark blue. Runner E is some more frame parts in gray, this time in ABS plastic. Runner F is a few pieces there in a light gray color. Runners G1 and H1 are some more white armor pieces. And then runners I1 and I2 are joined here. These are, once again, some more gray inner frame and weapons type pieces. Now getting into our parts from the Wing Gundam Zero EW Verka, we've got runner C1 here for some wing parts, and runner D as well for the back wings, we've got two of those, and runner J here in gray, some of the mechanical parts for the wings. And now getting into some of our brand new parts, specifically for this kit, runner XA is some wing parts there obviously, some more feather bits here on runner XB1 and XB2, including some parts there for the lance weapon. XC1 and XC2 are some more parts in dark blue for some more weapons pieces, looks like mostly on there, and some new hand pieces maybe. Runner XD is in a slightly off-white color compared to the bright white that is on the other runners. And then runners XE1 and XE2 are obviously our yellow and red parts, the one red part there, the new part for the crest, and that's it. But before we continue on with the video, guys, it's time for a snack break. This time I'm taking a look at the Sakurako box here. In a recent video, you guys saw me take a look at the Tokyo Treat box, which is very colorful and bright and designy. This one definitely appeals to the modern Tokyo anime kind of aesthetic with the bright colors and design and everything. This one, however, feels much more Ginza, if you guys know what I mean, in that it's just super nice, elegant package design for one, which makes me really miss Japan. 
like with this one did as well. And this one is just once again a monthly box subscription service. It's from the same company, but it's a different option that you guys can get. This one as well, guys, we'll pop this open and we'll try out some of the stuff inside. If you are interested in trying out this box for yourself, the link is in the video description below where you can go use that link and it'll help out my channel if you guys sign up for this. But uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look here at this because like I said, the, just the packaging design on this one is so nice and everything inside I want to make sure to show you guys in cool detail and we'll try out some of it. So let's go ahead and get into it. And just to give you guys a bit more information, Sakuraco is a monthly Japanese subscription box where you get 20 traditional and authentic artesian kind of Japanese snacks that'll include things like Japanese tea and every box will also include a piece of Japanese tableware which is very cool you can actually use. Sakuraco also partners with local Japanese snack makers to help to share the Japanese culture and traditions with everybody. Their mission there at Sakuraco and Tokyo Tree is just to share Japanese culture with the world through the medium of snacking and if you want to try more of like like the Japanese pop snacks, you can try out Tokyo Tree, but if you want more traditional type Japanese treats, then you can try Sakura Ko instead. And like I said, guys, just take a look at that design. You have this gold printing over here and this beautiful box art design. I know that these uh, subscription box services can be pricey, but like I mentioned in the previous video, I have seen people go ahead and actually like cost compare everything. And if you were to go out and get a bunch of this stuff just on your own separately, it would still end up costing you more. So if you're interested, in getting some stuff like this, doing a box subscription service like this is actually ultimately cheaper. So nice on the inside of the box cover here. Nice to meet you. Let's have tea. All the best things are shared. When I said this is very Ginza style, if you guys have ever been to Ginza in Tokyo, it's a, an area where there's a lot of high-end stores, including like, like high-end tea shops and stuff like that. And that's where you can get a lot of this kind of stuff that looks like this. But here's a little card here, which has some beautiful artwork here on the front. And on the back, there's a little note here. Greetings, Sakuraiko family. June marks the tail end of spring and the start of summer in Japan with temperatures slowly rising and summer's humidity creeping in for anyone looking to escape a milder climate with no rainy season, Hokkaido is perfect at this time of year. Consistently warm weather makes exploring the island a breeze and there's a lot to see besides the beautiful coastline offering plenty of seafood. Hokkaido features Japan's most wide open landscape. The origin of the majority of Japan's dairy products in the island is home to many unique sweets and dishes. We're taking the opportunity to share the taste of Hokkaido with you, the Sakurako family, and hope we can help you take a well-deserved break. Love, Ayumi. Chikamoto. Anyway, so this box is apparently uh, Hokkaido themed and as you can tell this is also the June box. So here is your information booklet like we had with the Tokyo Treat box. This one will give you some information about all of the individual snacks included in here but also gives you some information about whatever the theme is. So you can, as you can see on here, this is the Taste of Hokkaido Snack Guide Volume 16 for June of 2022. So you've got the Taste of Hokkaido there with all the snacks very nicely presented. Daya Confectionery Sweetening Corn. Hoka Biscuits for everyone. So you just got some really nice information just if you're interested in Japan and Japanese culture and things like that. I actually like this booklet a lot. So the snacks and everything are great, but this booklet is honestly really nice information just for just kind of getting a little bit more information about just different aspects of Japanese, especially food culture, of course. But uh, I think there's a lot of really great stuff in here. So it does really seem like really thoughtfully crafted. And I do actually really like this aspect of it a lot. But let's get into it with all of the snacks here. So let's just count exactly how much is in here. So you got one, two, these two will count that as one thing. Three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, mm, twelve, eleven, twelve, we'll count that. A very nice, it's just plastic, but meant to look like a nice lacquer bowl included in here. You have what I'm guessing is also a kind of jello there, it looks like. And then some tea here. Again, matcha. I've never had this kind of tea before, so I'll have to try that out. And the question now is where to start. But I do have to say, I liked how the Tokyo Treat box came with an actual drink. Now this one does have a tea, which you can make into a drink, but I liked the fact that that one, even though I didn't necessarily care for the drink all that much, it was pretty interesting. Uh, I did like that it actually just came with a drink you could just open up and just try out and it was something weird and unique. This one, again, just though it does match with the style of this box though I think pretty well. But okay, I'm gonna start out with this one here because I love azuki. If you guys don't know, Japanese uh, sweet red bean is super delicious. Sweet azuki beans 
are yet another specialty Hokkaido has to offer encased in crispy rice wafers. This traditional treat is perfect with a cup of tea. Of course, I could make one, but I'll try making some of that tea a little bit later. I just want to try this because this looks really interesting. And I'm breaking it apart trying to see what's on the inside, but it's like a cookie. Interesting. I've never had azuki in this way before. Hmm. It is really good though. Have you guys ever had like those rectangle like wafer cookies? You know, I don't know where if they have those in other countries, but at least here in America, like the chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla ones. Imagine like a cookie like that around some Japanese red bean paste in there, and it's really good. Yeah. This one is also azuki uh, doriaki. So this one is kind of similar. Doriaki is like these little like pancakes with red bean inside. This is like a smaller version. This is a larger version of that. If you guys have ever seen Doraemon, apparently this is like Doraemon's favorite thing to eat. I want to try this larger one here. This one, uh, I guess I'm trying all the red bean flavored stuff. But like I said, I do really like it. So you can see it's basically like pancake sandwich there. Don't eat that. Mm. This is also a really good snack if you guys are traveling in Japan. Of course, you can pick up at like any convenience store anywhere, everywhere. Not only in Hokkaido and not only in certain times of year or whatever. Very convenient snack and good. Probably not very healthy, but it is really good. All right, we'll try one more here. The sweet corn chocolate, <laughs> which just sounds like such an interesting combination. I have to try it. Although, after living in Korea for a long time and traveling to Japan many times, sweet corn chocolate doesn't sound that strange to me, but it's the one that I can imagine to a lot of you guys probably sounds the most different. Uh, but here it is, yeah, basically just looks like some like uh, yellow chocolate coated uh, popcorn kind of little bits on there. It says this is the one of the most popular snacks to bring back from a trip to Hokkaido, which if you guys didn't know, it's a thing they do in Japan, Korea. When people go on trips, a lot of times they'll bring back snacks and stuff for their co-workers. So I know like in Korea, for example, anytime someone goes to Jeju Island, they bring back uh, like orange chocolate uh, stuff. This is the kind of thing that when you travel to Hokkaido, you can probably buy like boxes and boxes of these. You'd bring them back for your co-workers or family members and stuff like that as just a kind of uh, souvenir. Super good. Really doesn't taste all that much like chocolate or corn, but it's just a sweet uh, chocolatey cookie kind of thing. It's good. So anyway guys, thank you for listening. Uh, a lot of really great stuff in here. I'll take the rest of this home and share it with my wife and kids. I'm sure they'll love that. Uh, but again, if you guys are interested in checking out this box, the subscription service to Sakurako or Tokyo Treat, the link will be down in the video description below. Again, it helps me out and I hope to share some more of these uh, with you guys in future videos next month. So until then, let's go ahead and get back to the review. Alright guys, here's the kit all built up and it looks fantastic. It, this is a really great looking kit. The tall geese itself doesn't really have anything new with it, so that's just going to be the same kit that we've all seen for a while now, for a number of years. That said, the kit doesn't feel dated at all. It has been out for a while, but it doesn't feel like you're building like an older Master Grade. It still feels pretty much up to date. But most definitely, the wings are the main highlight of this kit, and the new parts added there for the wings are fantastic. The added yellow on the front wings, and then the back wings, you would think the same, but there is a little bit of difference in the parts on the back wings as well. That's kind of interesting. We'll take a look at everything in more detail here, starting off with the weapons right now. Or with our accessories, I guess I should say. Starting off here, we have our little Zex figure, which is the same as from the original kit, so unfortunately we didn't get a new one with this kit. And our action base connector. Our hands are just gonna be the type where you just swap the fingers, so there's your closed fists. You also have a set for open hands, trigger finger extended holding hands, your regular holding hands, this would be for the beam sabers. And we've also got a new set of holding hands that have a little bit different size peg on the inside. These are going to be for holding the new weapons. But starting off with the familiar ones, here's the dauber gun, which is in very nice multiple different colors there. You have that clear part for the camera. This just attaches up underneath the shoulder as normal. It does have the spring-loaded action here, how this can actually move back and forth the barrel can like that. And that can pop forward in there like that, so it's pretty cool. And for the other side, you've got the shield here, and there's your beam saber handles stored up underneath there. You have this handle that folds out, but this is a little bit different in that now you have this piece 
here, which is attached onto there, and this is to hold your lance or your halberd, but in the manual it shows to use it with the lance anyway. Real quick though, you do also have your beam saber effect parts there, which are the slightly curved type, which do look really nice. So here's the lance, which is our first of the two new weapons here, the heat lance, and it's got these secondary handles on either side that fold out on the left or the right, depending on how you might want to hold that. And speaking of holding that, I'm eager to test out how the well this really attaches onto there, and it does seem to hold onto that pretty well, because it's basically just a little clasp, and depending on how you want it to pose, obviously it's not going to hold it too well. But assuming you're not displaying the kit upside down and just having it normal like that, then it's going to hold it pretty well because basically uh, this part here is just uh, balancing it because it, obviously it's got all this weight to the front, but the, it, yeah, it still doesn't hold it all that well it seems like. Anyway, the color separation on this is really nice. You will have a seam line going down most of the length of the lance there, but that's not too surprising. And here is our heat halberd, which is also very cool. Now you could actually remove this part and just make it to having a shorter handle like that I guess if you wanted to but assuming you want the full length of the handle it does have multiple points where you can attach the hands onto there those holes in there and again really nice color separation on this very nice design and details on there it looks really nice you do have a seam line on the main blade right there so you will have to glue that together if you want to get rid of that line on there but some really great looking new weapons as for the tall geese itself you guys may have noticed that it was kind of standing balanced on the back wings so the back wings do help to kind of stand it up and not be back heavy we won't go over the main body in too much detail because once again it's the same masquerade tall geese that's been out for a number of years the cockpit does open up and you have the same seated pilot figure up inside there which is going to be pretty difficult to see the head crest is new though and it looks fantastic in this kind of satin finish uh red up there it's not a too high gloss red and it looks really really nice the clear part for the visor there also catches the light pretty nicely so that looks good but like i said of course the main thing is going to be the new parts for the wings so this section of the wing is new to accommodate a slightly different design here on the front and then also the yellow piece there at the top and then also this front piece is different of course because we have this new yellow piece on there right there like that you do also have a new piece here on the inside that on the original kit that would fold out to latch onto the rifles for storing the rifles up underneath the wings here but obviously you don't need that so you have a new little piece that just fits right up inside there and just like with the original kit the wings open up actually you don't have to hold on to both you can just hold on to one they're uh, geared together so that when you open up one side it opens up the other as well and the back wings is mostly the same except for this bottom piece is different and it does look a little bit weird i, I want to like it because it's a new part and so i appreciate that it's something new added on there to the design and not just the exact same wing but it does look a bit, bit strange with it being wider than the part of the top so i don't know how i feel about that but when you open this that thruster bell kind of pops out there which is pretty cool if you guys can see that it kind of extends down pops out a little bit that's kind of nice little bit but otherwise that's about it so normally you'd have your other feathers inside there with the original kit but now it just opens up like that and the thruster belt pops out so it is a little bit more kind of closer to the original tall geese's kind of backpack the thruster units which i should say you have a bunch of leftover parts and i believe it seems to me like you probably have all the parts to make the original tall geese backpack like thruster pods if you wanted to i have not tried it but if one of you guys knows for sure you can let me know in the comment section below but I'm anxious to try out some posing with this kit and see how well it does. So we'll start off with a couple on the ground before we get it up on an action base. And it actually poses pretty well on the ground. Obviously, you're going to be a little bit limited as far as like balancing options. But the front wings are pretty good for counterbalancing the back wings, depending on how you want to have them. And in the case that you don't have an action base and you are limited to just ground poses with this kit, I think it doesn't look too bad. But obviously, up on an action base is going to be the best way to really display this. I think probably just with all the wings and everything, just to really be able to get the dynamic look of this flying in the air. And the wings are great, honestly. Posing them works fine, and you're not gonna, really going to have any issues with those. Really, the only issues that I am having with this kit are just carried over issues that uh, issues that I had with the original Tall Geese kit that are obviously just not changed going into this kit. And that's number one going to be the action base connector is not very good. So while getting up on action base is going to be the way to go, the action base connector is not really the strongest. So you do just need to be a little bit careful with that. It doesn't hold the kit very well. That and the kit doesn't hold its weapons all that well. Most notably. The double gun. The other weapons are pretty much fine. The, the just the way the tall geese is designed, it just doesn't really hold the double gun all that well in a way that like really looks natural or anything. It's just kind of a very strange design, and any version of the tall geese that I've ever built just has never really 
had the ability to hold the Dauber gun all that well. I think the Master Grade does it the best out of any other version of the of the Tall Geese, but it still always just seems to, to be a little bit awkward. I don't know, but I think you can kind of basically ignore that just by how great the rest of the kit looks. The kit looks fantastic. I can highly recommend this to you guys if you're a fan. I think it's a really cool kit. What do you guys think about it? It is going to be more expensive, obviously, being a premium Bandai Master Grade, but if you can get your hands on it for a decent price, I would highly recommend it to you guys, and I would highly recommend picking up an action base at the same time. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about it? Is it one that you've already got or one that you're planning on getting? And maybe let me know in the comments too, which is your ultimate favorite version of the Tall Geese between the one, two, three, and now this, the Flugel. I don't know, which one is your guys' favorite? Let me know. So for now, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. Check out the link to US Gundam Store down in the video description below. We've got all sorts of other good Gunpla for you guys to check out there. And until next time, I hope you're all having a great day. See you guys later. Bye-bye.